dollar bill is the uh, obligation of the Federal Reserve System. The Federal Reserve is not a government part of the U.S. government. It is a separate, standalone corporation chartered by the federal government, but separate from the federal government. If you work for the Fed, and I have a number of former students who are Federal Reserve employees, they're bank examiners and other positions. They are not federal, federal government employees, they're employees of the Federal Reserve System. Okay? They are paid on a different pay scale. Everything is different than working for the federal government. The purpose of the Federal Reserve is to control and manage the money supply. And it was set up as a separate independent agency so that politicians would not have control over the money supply. That's the theory. Okay. Now, the one place they do have some say is that the president appoints the people who are on the board of governors of the Federal Reserve System. And they have to be advised, advised and consent of the Senate like a Supreme Court nominee. They have very long terms of office. I believe they're in for 14 years. Um, they cannot be fired, only impeached. So when President Obama came into office, he couldn't put all new people on the Fed. Uh, if they were on the Fed, they wanted to serve out their term, their long term, they could. Uh, though most of them don't serve the full term. They, they leave after a few years to go get a real job on Wall Street or someplace else. Um, so the Fed is um, designed, the whole design of it is to be able to help control the money supply, stabilize the financial system, etc. They do this by printing money, if you will. They don't print the money. The government prints the money, but they distribute the money. They issue the money. Um, and through that affect interest rates. Um, the Fed can make a decision any point in time, the Board of Governors and the Federal Open Market Committee can make a decision. What do we want the economy, the growth of the economy, and the growth of the money supply to be? Um, what we, the problem we have right now is that the government, because of their increase in spending, uh, that debt that is issued, and that's the other thing I, I didn't mention before and, and I think is actually important. The Federal Reserve acts as the Merrill Lynch, if you will, for the federal government. They're the responsible for helping the federal government issue its debt, just like Merrill Lynch helps Microsoft issue stocks and bonds of obligations of Microsoft. The Fed helps the U.S. Treasury issue debt. And so when the debt gets floated out in the marketplace, if there isn't a willing buyer, the Fed can buy that up with money that it's issued, printed, and expanded the money supply. If you look at the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve System over the last two or three years, what you will see is an explosion in the size of the Federal Reserve. Why? Because they basically bought the debt. And that's what we call monetizing the debt. Um, by increasing the money supply you to purchase the government debt and, and keep interest rates low, which is what in, in Fed policy and certainly it's work. Interest rates are relatively low. Again, for those of you who are a little bit older in the audience, you remember when interest rates, uh, my first mortgage I ever took out was 11%. Uh, I remember mortgage rates getting to 15, 16, 17%. Um, again, some of you who are younger will go, ah, come on, that never happened. Yes, it did. It was very, it, it happened for a long time, uh, for a number of years. So I think this is, is very, very critical to understand that what we are seeing right now is the Fed push pumping money into the system. And as I said before, my professor is telling me, you can't pump that much money into the system without having at some point inflation. It's always and everywhere a monetary issue. Um, the other day I was reading an article on the web, uh, New York University professor Muriel Rubini, who's well known for those of you who follow markets, he was one of the predictors of the crash of the stock market and the housing bubble bursting and all of that. Um, in talking about uh, Greece, which Gary talks about, Gary and Brian always make fun of that every day on the radio that there's a story about Greece and everybody's worked up. Um, Greece, Manuriel Rubini called Greece the canary in the coal mine. Uh, the analogy, for those of you who don't know what that means, in coal mining they send a canary down in a cage, and if they bring the cage back up and the canary's dead, they know the air is no good in the coal mine. Okay, So it's better to lose the canary than to lose the miner. 
Um, what he's basically saying is that Greece is this little microcosm, if you will, it's a small country, well-developed country, it's not a little African, underdeveloped, weird state. It is an economy, it's a democracy, it's, you know, Western economy, member of the EU. Uh, they are a, in, in a sample exactly what the United States will be if it continues down this path. Um, we also have Spain, we have Portugal, we have Ireland, we have a number of other countries that are called the Cone Pigs, I think, right? Portugal, Ireland, Greece, Spain, um, that are all in the same boat and all heading down that same path. And so um, I think you have to look at what's going on in Greece, and I know Gary's going to talk more about how that might play itself out um, going forward. But I'm going to turn it over to Doug, and Doug's going to talk a little bit about deficits and the dollar, and then Gary's going to jump in and tell us a little bit about what he thinks is going to happen in the future. And also touch on Greece as well, because again, that, um, number one, that's a, that's a hot topic with, uh, with us. Is like Linda said, we, we think we, we see that coming. Um, obviously, the mess that we're in is you know taking time to build up for decades. And I was happy to hear Joe say up here, it's not a Democrat thing, it's not a Republican thing, it's been a systems thing. I mean, it's obvious our our politicians they've been overspending for decades, and uh, but but it's it's fascinating. <coughs> The way things have just ramped up in such a massive way here of late, and obviously the credit bubble with, uh, forget the senator said, to never take a, you know, you've got to make use of that, any good crisis, and, and they certainly have. Um, our, our deficits have literally, you know, multiplied by three and four times. You know, we're running at about a trillion and a half behind. Um, currently today, you know, you know, if we've got multiple concerns. I'm going to be throwing those out. Number one, uh, what pays for everything that the government spends? It's our tax dollars, right? Well, obviously they're spending more money. And so at this particular point in time, they're borrowing about 45% of their spending. And so that obviously can't go on forever. And our concern is right now, we are the currency of the world. At some point in time, that's going to flip, okay? Our current national debt is about 10 trillion, which we've gone from it's too high when Bush was in there, about 60% of GDP, which is gross domestic product. We're now at 100% GDP. Put that in perspective, Greece, uh, depending on which study you read, they're running somewhere between 135 and 149 percent of GDP. Well, we're already, uh, if we're adding between one and tri two trillion dollars on top of that, we're on that path. In fact, we're at a death point right now. We couldn't even qualify if we wanted to to get into the EU right now. And one of the requirements is 60% debt to GDP. We're at 100. So even if we wanted to be part of the European Union, we couldn't. Okay? Um, Greece, by the way, had the, the uh, um, um, Pandoro, or whatever his name is, he's got a real mess on his hands. You know what his number one platform to get elected was? Increase the state wages. So, <laughs> how's that going to work out? You know, so that, that's what got him in. Now he's being forced to cut salaries, uh, increase taxes, curb spending. Uh, they're, they're now passing a rule. Apparently, they can only have fire for two percent of the workforce a year. They're going to allow for four percent. So they got some real masses there. Um, are you aware that we have our own Greece here too? Anybody know who that is? What that is? <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's a good one. That's a good uh, Close. California. 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 Okay. Right now, Greek debt, their, their 10 year debt a couple weeks ago capped out at 11.4%. That was 800 basis points over ours, or 8%. Now, since floated back in the last several days, since it looks like the EU is going to bail them out uh, to 9.45%. Think about that. Now let's apply it to our perspective. And Linda talked about you know the inflation. Uh, you know what's you know not only are prices going to rise, but what else? Interest rates. Okay. You know, and in fact, we feel we're looking at a triple double, which is you know not in basketball terms, you know rebounds, assists, and points, but it's interest rates, inflation.